G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for a continuation of our little draft series that I'm doing on Tier Maker, where basically I go back and I look at a recent draft, you know, a few years after we've seen the players develop over time, maybe a lot of these players are between that 50 to 100 game sort of mark, and we're ranking them based on how good they've turned out to be. So obviously in recent weeks, I have done the 2016 and the 2017 draft, and I intend to do even more. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing the 2018 draft. I did say I was gonna do this uh, a little bit later on in the piece, but I woke up today uh, with a little bit of uh, 2018 draft blue balls, and I just wanted to get it done today. So we're going to look at uh, the top 20 picks, and then I've added some of the later picks who are worthy of a mention for this video as well. Before we get into it, guys, really appreciate all the support on the channel so far. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that a large portion of the people who actually watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel, and I want to get that percentage of people who are not subscribed below 40%, and we're currently sitting around the 44% mark. So if you do me a favor and hit subscribe, if you are enjoying the content and you wanna see more of it, that would be much appreciated and you'd be helping out the channel. But in today's video, yep, we're gonna be using Tier Maker again. 2018 was a particularly strong draft and that's you know largely the reason a lot of people uh, wanted to see this ranking because uh, particularly at the top end, I did a little draft look at it. There's some real genuinely elite players or players on the cusp of being elite and even the, the tier down from that is very, very strong as well. So it's looking like one of the strongest drafts potentially since 2001. Cool, so now here we are back on Tier Maker, and uh, if you remember, I've got five categories. And I do I do shuffle the categories a little bit based, I guess, on basically on how even some of the prospects are. But today we've gone with Elite as the top category because there are some genuinely elite players in this. There's genuine guns, good players, decent players, and average players. And I think in this one, there is one, maybe two off the top of my head, but just one player who's been delisted, which is consistent with the theme of the other videos I've done if you've been watching them. So like I'd like to do for every tier maker, I'm gonna put one player in each category. So we set our boundaries and then we'll go from there. So we'll start off with elite. I'm gonna start with Sam Walsh. He was pick number one in this particular draft. And I don't think it's necessarily clear that he's the best player from this draft, only because of the strength of some of the other top picks in this draft. And in particular, that top 10 is very, very decent. I, I did a, a, in research for this video, I had a look at a redraft a couple of years ago of this draft. And I think only two of the top 10 were different. Usually the breakdown of that is uh, is not quite like that. But anyway, Sam Walsh, a uh, potential Brownlow medalist one day, he's already gotten pretty close. I don't really need to sell you on Sam Walsh. I think he's an elite midfielder, particularly on his day. Um, I think he went without a preseason this year, but regardless, still a very high output uh, midfielder. So absolutely elite uh, by my calculations. Then we'll go for average, uh, just to get a top and bottom going. Riley, Riley Collier Dawkins, I think is the only one in the top 20 who has been delisted, but uh, I guess I'll find that out as this video goes. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, Matt, did he manage a handful of games for Richmond? Never really hit the standard. Big bodied midfielder. Um, again, feel half putting average, but somebody's got to be in the bottom category, right? So we're going to go with the one delisted player. Genuine gun. I'm going to put Cal Wilkie. He's having a fantastic year. Um, I, you know, you could make the case he's elite. I just, I think when the, the video pads out and you can see who else I've got in elite, uh, it makes sense why Callum Wilkie is not quite on that standard, but obviously probably going to be all Australian this year, having a terrific season. One of the most most important uh, components of a St. Kilda side that's having a pretty good year so far for the most part. So uh, he's in genuine gun. Who is going to be a good player? Probably someone like a James Rowbottom again, you know, like a, a pretty re dependent, reliable midfielder from Sydney. Doesn't have massive numbers, his output. I think he averages less than 20 possessions a game, but I think he is still maybe more important than those numbers suggest. So he's a good player. And then we're going to go with decent, probably like a Chase Jones. We'll start that off uh, with Chase Jones. I think uh, been a bit maligned by Crows fans in the past, sort of a smaller outside uh, Tasmanian midfielder originally. And uh, I think he's having a bit of an improved season from what I can tell, but still probably decent. And again, this will make sense as the video progresses when you can see him compared to the other named. Connor Rosie, uh, I just saw him flash up uh, before my eyes right here. I'm gonna put him in elite. He's absolutely one of the better midfielders in the competition um, and dynamic as well and impactful. So one of those players who hits the scoreboard and may only sometimes get possessions in the early 20s, but he's still impacting um, and he's got a good combo of inside and outside. So absolutely elite by my standards. Bailey Smith, I'm gonna put in genuine gun because I don't think he's ever reached the heights of you know your Walshes and, and Butters who I haven't mentioned yet. We'll get to that, um, but he's better than a good player. Um, he's been, you know, a little up and down in form, but you know, he's clutch. You can tell in that photo that was the ice in the veins moment um, from that uh, semi-final against Brisbane in 2021. He is a genuine gun, let's face it, and uh, has been good, you know, throughout his whole career. 
Um, let's find another good player, probably Xavier Dersma. Um, you know, had flashes of being brilliant at times, and I think his form has fluctuated in the, uh, over time as well, but he's still a good player, but not quite, you know, just clearly not on the Bailey Smith level, for instance. Another decent player is probably Justin McInerney, um, you know, outside sort of wingman, very fast, can be very, very damaging. Um, but uh, probably not consistent enough to be a genuinely good player. Like Again, uh, averages less than 20 possessions a game. Um, decent, decent. And average, this one might seem a little harsh. He's still on an AFL list, but he's managed just 11 games at the level, and that's Sam Sturt from Fremantle. Uh, pick 17, I want to say, off the top of this, off the top of my head from this draft. Um, again, I didn't look that up. I just, I just vaguely remember as around about 17, so forgive me if I got it wrong. But yeah, started his career very well um, with three goals, I think, in round one of his debut season, and then sort of been uh, permanently injured and then sort of struggled to really crack into a Fremantle side that has improved admittedly. Um, played pretty well in the wing in recent times, but I think he averages like less than a goal a game and six touches at AFL level this year. So yeah, I think he's he's destined for the delist pile, even though I've kind of always thought that he had a lot of tools to make it AFL level. Zach Butters, I've already mentioned, so surprise, surprise, he's an elite. He's a chance to win the Brownlow this year. Um, he's certainly going to be one of those top-end contenders for it. Uh, always been a big fan. I, I think even from his first preseason, he made a, a big impression, and uh, I feel like this is the year he's, he's clicked, and he's really become that top-level player. 12 months ago, he would not have been elite, but he's elite now, and I think he'll continue to demonstrate that level of skill. I'm gonna give uh, Lockie Schultz, I nearly said Sam Schultz. Who the hell is Sam Schultz? Sam Schultz was another AFL player. I'm blanking, sorry, but it's Lockie Schultz. Uh, yeah, very good and potentially underrated player from outside Western Australia. Really damaging, uh, mature age player who was drafted to Fremantle, I think fairly late in this draft from memory. Fremantle have a good knack of picking up guys in the 50s, like historically, and Lockie Schultz is one of them. Um, I think he's a genuine gun. I would love to steal him for West Coast. Uh, another good player, let's see who we've got. Taron Thomas, probably. I find him very hard to categorize. Obviously, he's been um, you know, wrapped up in some unfortunate stuff, and I think coming back to the side this year, he's been relatively productive. Um, it's tough. He's definitely not a genuine gun because I just don't think he's demonstrated enough. I think that's a key component of this. It's, it's you've got to have some demonstrated ability of being consistent. Whereas Taron Thomas, to me, looks like a player who should be a genuine gun if he sort of gets his shit together a little bit. So that's an awkward one because I think he does have the potential to be really, really top end. He's a very, very dynamic player, uh, but he hasn't earned genuine gun for me yet. So I hope that makes sense for his fans. So we don't necessarily have to be doing this category by category. I'm just going to pick a random one here. Uh, let's go with Jai Caldwell. I'd say he's a good player too. He's a very damaging sort of midfielder forward for uh, Essendon, who obviously got him from GWS. I think he's like pick 11 in this draft or pick nine or something like that. Again, I think he's had some injury issues um, and some sometimes his production can fluctuate a little bit. But on his day, I think he should become a very, very good player. Jack Lacocious, I'm putting in genuine gun uh, with the potential to be elite, but at the moment he's he's kind of a victim of the fact that he plays multiple positions so well and obviously played a lot of his career down back for Gold Coast and was a very good running defender with really good distribution. He's gone forward this year, he's kicked 20 odd goals, a uh, couple of bags of five um, and been a real match winner for him, but probably not elite for his position yet, I think that's fair to say, but one of my favorite players in the competition genuinely. Ned McHenry is probably decent, you know, pressure forward, um, solid numbers, doesn't rack up a heap of tackles, um, but plays with a good intensity, um, doesn't hit the scoreboard that much for a forward. So I think he's decent. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. I'll give Bailey Williams decent as well. I think he has the potential to be good, but um, you weight it against other ruckmen in the competition, he's probably sort of lower middle, but a lot of his career he's been overexposed. Um, and again, as a ruckman here, he's probably got the longest development path uh, than any other player here. So it's a little bit apples and oranges. But one thing I'll say about Bailey Smith is after having a being very maligned unfairly up until this year, he's taken on the number one rock role and he's genuinely going to probably finish top five in the BNF. So I think that he's at least decent and I think he will be one that potentially slides up these rankings because he's a ruckman. He's only really starting to find his feet. So decent for now, but I think he is a good player like waiting to happen. Jackson Haley, I'm going to put in average. Um, is that harsh? He technically did get delisted at GWS, but I think that was one of those things where he was trying to facilitate a trade to Adelaide. It didn't happen because too much was going on. They took him in the PSD. He's only played 27 games at AFL and uh, never averaged more than 20 possessions a game uh, in a season. So long story short, I think that's that's average. I think it's pretty generous to say he's a decent player um, when you consider you know the other players in the that 
category. Tom Atkins, I'm going to say, is a good player. Uh, again, um, so he was in the rookie draft uh, as a mature age player, I think. He was like a good VFL midfielder. He started off as a small forward at AFL level, and then particularly the last year, he made a name for himself as being one of Geelong's most important clearance players in the team that won the premiership. But in terms of genuine output, like I, I can't put him on the Bailey Smith level. I think he's a good player. That's genuinely what he is. Tom Sparrow, decent. Um, when I think of Tom Sparrow, I think of that amazing goal he kicked in the 2021 Grand Final, along with all the other, other amazing goals in that chain. Um, Big-bodied midfielder forward sort of thing. Um, a good role player, I'd say is decent. Quainor is a good player. I uh, I really like Quainor actually. Really, really strong. Like if, when you look at him closely, he's one of the most built players, particularly for his size in the comp. A uh, good rebound sort of intercept player without being uh, really spectacular. He plays in a good system, but I think he's actually talented as well, for sure. Nick Blakey, I'm going to put in Genuine Gun, the Lizard. Um, he's a player that I, I picked for a surprise All-Australian berth this year, and i I'll wait and see if that happens. I don't know if he's in the side right now, but drafted as a like lanky key forward from memory, um, and they've re- sort of like Lacocious, they've turned him into a running defender with great effect, and I'd say Genuine Gun without being elite. The King Twins, again, elite's tough because... Um, if I'm trying to categorize this on on like what they've demonstrated, they've de- both demonstrated that they are very, very good key forwards. But again, elite is probably like Jeremy Cameron, Charlie Curnow. Uh, I think I'll still go elite. They've both done an ACL each as well, which doesn't help. But I think they are clearly on talent better than the players ranked below them. So I'll say elite, but again, uh, they're probably not quite either of them in the top three to four key forwards of the comp for sure but I feel wrong putting them below elite because I think they will be elite it's inevitable they're absolute guns Bobby Hill uh oh, tough one he was at GWS most of his career didn't really set the um the world alight is what I'm trying to say there and as a small forward in this Collingwood setup has put together a very respectable season with 20 goals I'm, I'm thinking decent to be honest the reason being is if it's on demonstrated form so far I can't really put him ahead of some of those other guys in decent but Maybe that's harsh. Maybe that's harsh. Yeah, look, he's put together one pretty good season in the best team in the competition. I'm going to say decent for now. But again, if he continues his body of work and he has a four-year to five-year stint of this sort of level at Collingwood, then then he goes to good player. I hope that makes sense. Jordan Clark is a good player, I would say. Um, you know, I try to avoid watching Fremantle, but no, in all seriousness, um, yeah, sort of good running defender and I think particularly played well in Fremantle's system last year when things were going well. Obviously, they're going poorly, um, but he's still winning a fair bit of the ball. I think he's been good and he did have a pretty good start, stint at Geelong, so that's what sets him apart from Bobby Hill I think we've known about Jordan Clark and what he can do a little bit longer he's nothing special but he's a good role player then finally Isaac Rankin and I am struggling to categorize this I am generally thinking elite or genuine gun Uh, when you weight him against the other small forwards in the competition he's probably close to elite he's probably not the best small forward in the comp I think that's probably still Charlie Cameron I'm going to put him in elite because you're weighting him against other small forwards and um, you know he should have an all Australian jumper this year quite potentially so he's been a fantastic recruit for him Um, Isaac Rankin when he was drafted he went pick three to the Gold Coast Suns and he was one of the most hyped prospects in that draft probably the most hyped prospect in terms of look at what this kid can do and imagine what he can do at AFL level and with the draft you always got to have a level of skepticism with uh, young prospects like that but Isaac Rankin has more or less turned out to be the player that we were promised um, and I think he is set for a good long career at Adelaide as they continue to go up the ladder. So we'll quickly review uh, the rankings there um, and the elite players are Sam Walsh, Rosie, Butters, the King Twins and Rankin and I think that's about right to be honest. Just below that in Genuine Guns we've got Wilkie um, Um, who was taken in the rookie draft, I forgot to mention, um, after being missed out in several drafts before that. Bailey Smith, Lockie Schultz, Jack Lacocious, and Nick Blakey. That's a pretty good next layer, I would say. Below that, you've got Roe Bottom, Dersma, Taron Thomas, Caldwell, Tom Atkins, Quainor, and Clark. Decent players who play a role for their side without being spectacular are Chase Jones, Justin McInerney, McHenry, Bailey Williams of the West Coast Variety, Tom Sparrow, and Bobby Hill. Again, at least a couple of those players, I think, really have the potential to push up. And then the average players, as harsh as it sounds, are Sturt, RCD, and Jackson Haley because, you know, frankly, they just haven't had the same impact or a level of contribution at AFL level. So I think that's fairly justified. But as always, guys, I welcome your criticisms and your feedback. Um, Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. We're always going to see this differently. All of us, you know, first of all, we're all going to have different opinions. Second of all, we can't all have seen the same amount of football as each other and we all slightly have biases for different teams so we're always going to have different opinions but 
I do genuinely learn from the comments from you guys sometimes if you pull me up for missing something. There may be plays in here that I've just underappreciated because I can't possibly watch all the game from start to finish all the time. Uh, but I do learn from your comments, so um, keep letting me know. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and stay tuned for more content coming over the next couple of weeks. The footy season is getting exciting now. Um, we're going to keep this draft series going, but of course, there is still a lot of the 2023 season left to go and heaps to talk about. So appreciate you watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.